Hey everybody, got my new game for you. As you can see here, you've seen the game before. You hopefully played the game with the family with uh, when you were a kid, when you were an adult. Anyway, it's a bit manic, it's a bit grabby, it's a bit all over the place. And the excitement that you used to be able to have with your family is now something that you can bring into the classroom. This is Hungry Hungry Hippos. Hey everybody, welcome. Yeah, I'm Brian, the Game Show Guy. Here's my newest game that I've been developing. Um, this PowerPoint only game is one of my uh, newest ones and one that I've been finding a lot of fun putting together. And hopefully you can, uh, this fun that I've put together can translate into some fun and reviewing of content and discussing the stuff that you actually, uh, you go you actually, your kids actually learn. And that's kind of the whole point of these games is this blend between fun and um, um, assessing or reviewing or even just having conversations about content. And I think that's a key point of, of what, everything that I try to be able to do is so as long as that we're having conversations about geology or parts of speech or, you know, conjugating in Spanish, it doesn't really necessarily matter if you're having those conversations um and uh, through another vehicle. And that's what these games ultimately are, are going to be. Today's vehicle is Hungry Hungry Hippos. And Hungry Hungry Hippos is a game, um, you wonder like, how can this necessarily be a review game? Well, the premise of this game is, was the idea that um, I love the manic grab and speed and such. And so I'm actually, um, this is a 100% digital game. I am working on um, sort of a physical version as well that I'm hoping to be able to put out a little bit later to be able to add sort of a mini game element of this little sort of grab feature um, to be able to increase the fun in it. That's not necessarily part of the game right now. Right now the game is, um, like I said, it's 100% digital game and very similar to all my other games in which that you're going to be able to have questions. Those questions then... Uh, uh, how well the the teams and the players can answer those questions will ultimately translate into how um, give them opportunities in the game. And so basically the premise is if they answer questions, that means they get to be able to grab more. It's not necessarily a speed-based game like you see in the Hungry Hungry Hippos games. It's more the number of questions that you get equal to the more marbles that you're going to be able to grab on for your team. Anyway, so let's jump into the game. Like, um, like so many of my games, I love the intros, spent a lot of time on sort of this opening intro and sounds chomp And like uh, you've seen in virtually every one of the games that I've had, you have the title sequence, you've got some music, you've got some elements to be able to introduce you to the game. And then also I have the classroom edition written on there as well, so that you could be able to change that and say, let's say I'm doing eighth grade language arts or, you know, whatever you ultimately you're going to be able to do. And from there, let me hop out of the game and you can kind of see what it ultimately looks like. Um, slide two is always going to be a place where you can access the video that I'm making here. And here we go to the game board. This is the part that you're really going to uh, want to learn and um, uh, you'll be spending some time here. And basically, so uh, l l let me go over this with the um, from start to finish on this. So the team is going to the, the class is going to be divided up into four teams. Those four teams. Actually, let me uh, jump forward here. I'm going to skip this and go to the, the directions. You often will see this uh, the directions on my slides be these yellow um, backgrounds that basically are telling you these are just for you. So here is the direction. It says first off, I'm going to divide the class into four teams. If possible, uh, it, based on your room, I like to try to be able to circle them up. So actually get them into groups. Um, this one, you can't go more than four. Technically, if you want to do three teams, I think you could. Okay, two would be, eh, anyway, so with three, I would stick with four, but um, if you need to do three, you can. Um, and when those teams are in those little pods or areas, one of the things that I've been doing with my games lately is that oftentimes I forget which team is which. And in many of my games now is I'm giving ways to denote, uh, to label them for me. So as I'm managing the game, I need to know which team is which. And so what I did for this one is you can see there's a document called Hippo Printouts. And basically it's these things here. It's just a piece of paper. Um, it is, I'm sorry, it's a PowerPoint document in which that you're going to be able to open up, print, really recommend if you can print them in color. And then you can see there's just this little um, uh, hash line here, dotted line here, that if you fold 
And then when you put this, give this to each of the teams. So they put this on one of the desks that's facing you. So I'm just, so from where my perspective, I can be able to see where the orange, the green, and so forth the other teams are. And for them, they could be able to remember who they are. Really kind of a cute idea for a lot for, for any of these games if you actually have something. You got some hippos or something like that. But anyway, real simple way to be able to do that for help you to be able to, to remember who's who. The second thing that you're going to need is the classic whiteboard. I think this is used in, I almost say all, but so many of my games require... Um, that small uh, mini whiteboard. If you don't have the whiteboards, you could use just paper um, and have them be able to go uh, do a new one each time. But the idea here, as you can see, is that the class is going to be given, sorry, the, whoever's going to be playing in this is you're going to give them a, uh, a series of questions. Almost all of my games, usually it's you give one question, you get an answer. This one, I'm increasing it, which is the, I'm going to have the one player from each of those four teams are going to answer five questions. So five questions are going to be given. If they get all five of them, basically their, their hippo is going to gobble up five different marbles. If they get three, they gobble up three marbles. So basically that's in essence is it. Give them questions. If they answer them, you gobble up marbles. Underneath each marble is going to uh, show them a point value. So un unlike the regular Hungry Hungry Hippos game where every marble equals one point, whoever gets the most marbles wins. To be able to change that up a little bit, it's not necessarily the most questions. I wanted to have a little element of luck in there and such. And so um, I'll go back over to the main board and I'll show you how I designed this. So here are the marbles. All, all, all except for five of the marbles are red and the ones in the center are white. And when I put this into the slideshow mode, I want you to be able to see kind of what it looks like. And so if the yellow team gobbles, clicks on... Uh, eats one of those marbles that one right there is is says one so that means that marble equaled one point then the next one oh my goodness look at this one here's that little bit of luck or chance you can see that is an actual minus two let me click another one there's a plus one there's a plus one there's a two there's a three and kind of in essence that's it every if they get three questions they can click on they can eat three marbles i like to be able to say that they only can get a marble that has been touching one of their existing marbles and so i can't necessarily will say oh hey go jump and get the middle one the middle ones i've decided to add a little bit of um, um goal to get to the middle so i will say that hey you never know it's a bit of a risk you could pay off or you could not pay off and these ones you can see if i click on them i got a three point a six a six a three and right in the middle i have a ten i'm going to show you in a second about that you do have the ability to change any of these if you'd like um, the ones that you may want to necessarily change would be those white ones if you play this game multiple times so that they always may not think that I got to get to the middle one or which one was what. So you may want to move that around a little bit. And so let me um, ultimately, we'll sh I'll show you that how that works in a second. Let me go back to my directions though. So back to the whiteboard. So the way in which that I manage the game, I have those teams, you know, orange team is sitting there. And I'm going to want to be able to have a player from each step up and use the whiteboard. <clears throat> like a lot of my games, you do have the opportunity to, do you want one player from each team? So if I have four teams, is that four players? Or if I wanted to, I can double them up. Say, hey, I want two players from each team. If they're a little bit more comfortable that way, or if the questions are going to be, you may find the questions be a little bit more challenging. So maybe if you could help them pair up a little bit, you can even go to the extent that if your class sizes are small enough, or if the questions are hard, or if you just want to, you could just be able to say the entire team can work on guessing them. So you could give a whiteboard to the, each team and they could be able to guess them. And if you want to be able to change it up too, you could put a time limit on it. There's five questions. You could put a timer. Hey, everybody, here's five questions. And you got a 60 second or a 30 second timer and put their pens down on there. Great way to be able to use for like a math class. Let's say you're going to put five prompts up there, five questions for them to be able to do. They have a timer. How quickly can I get those five answers? And they can work all as a group. So again, a lot of flexibility. All my games, I hope that you'd be able to think about it. How is that going to fit into my classroom and such? So once you're once that time is up or once they've finished answering the questions, I'm going to continue move forward. Let's pretend there's one player from each team step up. Then I would say, okay, show your boards. And I would have them flip over their boards. And at that point, then I would then go over the answers. 
Then I asked the kids to be able to give a check uh, a check next to how many of them they got correct and then write a number in the bottom corner about how many marbles they're ultimately going to get. So you can see, for example, here, they hold them up and like, hey, you got three of the uh, uh, three of the of the uh, of the five of them correct. So orange team, you're going to have three. And that way I like to have the number so that we don't get lost. And they, hey, now I'm a blue team. And how many uh, marbles do you guys get and, and such? So. That's kind of the management of the game, if you would. Um, uh, let's jump back over and show you kind of how this thing works here. So if I hop over to here, let me go back to the board and, and basically show you how this uh, the gameplay is going to work. You're going to continue to go back to this main game board. But we'll start with the question bank. You show them this, and there's all your teams. How we keep scores, you're not going to use a whiteboard like some of my games. The score is actually kept on the hippos themselves. So if I'm the orange team, I can see I have 0-0. Zero, zero. And if I click on one of them, hey, I got a 1 right there. Then uh, you run in the computer, or oftentimes I'll hear a lot of teachers will be having a student assistant be able to help with them. If you just click on the digit on the right, you can see now it pops up as a number 1. And every time I click on that... It just keeps adding more digits and it rolls over. So if you accidentally go too far, no problem. Like, hey, is it, it's actually one, sorry. Go all the way back over and there's one. And then this goes as well too. So this is ultimately the way I'm gonna be able to kind of keep my ongoing score. These numbers stay. Um, the marbles, once you click on them, they disappear and they won't come back. All of this will stay that way unless one thing that you do, which could be a bit disastrous if you get out of the slideshow document. So many of my games are designed that you have to stay within here. So there's that escape button that you do not want to hit because if you get out of that, all scores are erased. Everything just gets reset. All of the, They're all based on animations. And so all those animations will be reset back to normal. And so all marbles will go back to being uh, visible. All the numbers go back to the way in which that they were. So you don't want to get out of them. You want to stay within here. Sometimes people, um, I, I, I've used this in the past, which is the, we didn't finish in today's game. And you're like, oh my gosh, you didn't finish the game. And you're like, no, well, how do I come back tomorrow? Because I got to play this game. Literally, if you need to come back, bring out your phone and say, hey, that's it for today. We're going to play the next part tomorrow or after lunch or something like that. Literally take a picture of your screen, screenshot it, or I just take a picture with my phone. And then that way, when I prep the game for the next day, I can go back to the score and hit those ones that are missing and it will basically reset the game. It'll only take about a minute or so to be able to reset all that back to kind of normal. But um, if you do it in mid play and you don't know where you left off, you could be a little bit of a trouble. Anyway, so now here we are. I'm about ready to start the game here. I'm going to hop back and reset everything. Let me show you. I hit escape, hit slideshow again, and now everything has been reset. All right. So let's say I got my four players from up. Hey, one player from orange, yellow, uh, green and blue come on up and they got their whiteboards, get them separated from each other. And now here come my questions. If I click on question bank number one, it takes me to here, preps them. If I wanted to underneath round one, I can tell them the the type of questions that we're asking, like, hey, here's some true false questions or multiple choice or whatever. Or I can tell them the theme of them. These are terms like a Jeopardy style. Like the, what is the topic? These are vocab words or these are famous people or something like that. Anyway, um, that's what this slide is for. Then when I click on the next one, simply comes to here. This is where the questions uh, are. <clears throat> Oftentimes, uh, like I said, most of my games have one question, and it's one question per slide. Here, it's, I got five per slide, so you're going to want your font relatively smaller um, to be able to fit them all under there. You need to get a... Um, be careful about having really, really large and just resize your stuff. Uh, you are unable to be able to accidentally move forward. You, if you click, you won't go forward. Um, you put the questions all in here. And uh, then when you're ready, you say, everybody, okay, show me your boards. They all flip their whiteboards over. And at that point in the upper right-hand corner, uh, the teacher or the student aide will then click on the click to reveal answers. And then comes up this slide. And this slide simply is just where you would have pre-typed all of those answers into that. So here you can see in an example of a game that I've created, this game is for an eighth grade language arts class. And so uh, instead of necessarily just round one, I wanted to preface the students to know what's coming. Like I said, it could be the style of question. Uh, here I have true false listed, or it could be something else in terms of the, the, the topic or whatever. So this is kind of what, a, what it would look like, true false. Then the next slide is these questions. I reiterated the TF to begin with. So like TF, an adverb can modify a noun, true or false. All sonnets have 14 lines, true or false, true or false. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration used to make a point and such. And so now when this is in the slide deck, 
the slideshow mode when it's being presented, I can't move forward. If I click on anything, it doesn't move forward. I have to wait and then wait for the reveal to all the answers in the upper right-hand corner, ask everybody to be able to show me their boards, and then the reveal answer will look like this and such. So you don't have to put the full reason why it's false. Not a bad idea if you're doing true, true false questions to be able to um, uh, have it there. You can discuss why it is. Basically, all my games, for my first game that I created, Jeopardy, is what I loved about these games is the, I assess what they know, but more importantly, now it gives me the opportunity to reteach. That if I see some people who struggled with one, this is the opportunity to talk about it. And it's in this game setting and um, uh, also gives me feedback. If I realize that on that question about adverbs, let's say, or how about a harder one, sonnets, then I realize that, boy, you know, you know, a lot of the three of the four groups got it wrong. Well, that's actually data for me that I can be able to go, not go back, but at the moment realize that the, they've gotten some of this uh, incorrect. They haven't learned. It's only a small proportion of the class, but hey, this is a good time to revisit what a sonnet's like. So anyway, and then very similar to the previous one in the upper right-hand corner where it, it takes me to, to click to reveal the answers. Now also in the upper right-hand corner is the next link, which takes me back to what I call the hippo pond or basically where all those were. And so let me show you what it looks like if we change our score. Let's say he's got 32, he's got 20, whatever, and a bunch of these have gone and a bunch of these have gone. And we played question bank number one. And then we click to the reveal answers and we go back to the hippo pond. And you can see all those are are still there. The score is still 33 and 23. Those marbles have disappeared. And I've also asked you to grade out um, a question bank number one to be able to remind you as the in the class that, that we are, we've already done with those questions and such. And so, um, and that in essence is the game back and forth. You kind of do more questions, more questions, and more questions. Uh, but I got some fun parts. Inspired by my love of the Nintendo and the mini games, look what I got down there on the bottom over there, a thing called Match. Well, Match is this. Match has been a fun thing that I've used in multiple games. I actually got it on Teachers Pay Teachers uh, right now if you want to be see it as a standalone game, but basically a memory game. And so in essence is this, if I got my four teams up uh, playing, who, can we play a game of memory and see who can get the most memory matches? Uh, basically, I have enough hippos hidden behind here that um, – uh, whatever team can get the most matches, they're going to get a bonus 10 points. Second place gets seven, third place gets four, uh, last place gets one point. And you need to come up with a way of who's going to go first. And so you can either draw straws or when you get to a match match game, you could say, hey, I want the uh, the team that's in uh, last place, you get to go first kind of a thing or the other way around. Um, come up with a way in which about he, who's going first because that's a, uh, and what the order is because that's going to be important. Uh, the second point too is how do you, if I go back to the hip pond um when do i do these your decision your choice i was I, I played this as i set the thing up i designed it which in which to do the i have three matches and i got nine so i was thinking a good way to break it up for every three question 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 mini game question 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 mini game so one two three do a mini game and so forth so feel free to do what you want you don't want to do them all ditch it kind of a thing anyway let me show you ultimately what it looks like and the way that this is designed all again through triggers and animations you don't need to touch any of it it's all done for you Super fun. Kids love playing matching. Adults love playing matching. Anyway, uh, so if you click anywhere on these cards, then you're going to have the um, the card disappear. And now first team's up. You're like, okay, I got a hippo eating popcorn. What do you want next? Uh, I want to do the top right one. So I do the top right one. Oh, that's a hippo eating a sub. Mm. Not a match. So now we go to team two. But how do I unreveal those? In the upper right-hand corner, there is this little uh, black back arrow. So if I click on that arrow... It goes away. This will happen endlessly. However many times I click on the top right one to make it go back, I simply just click on that back arrow. So um, now we go to team number two, and you got to remind everybody, remember where they are. And team number two goes, and like, okay, I'm going to go here. Oh, there's a hippo eating a taco, and now here's a hippo eating sushi. The first theme, by the way, I think it was all hippos and food. Anyway, so I can't remember where they were. Oh, he's not a food. He's a sheriff hippo anyway. So, hey, there's a taco. Where was the existing taco? And I got myself a match. Just like in the memory game, if the team gets a match, congratulations, you get to go again. 
uh, here I have them keep track on their whiteboards and give themselves one tally. So at the end, they can remember how many how many um, memory matches that they ultimately got. Super fun how to be able to uh, to be able to do that. Let me show you the other matches. First one I think was all food themed, and second one was all sport themed. Yeah, so I made all these little hippo characters with the magic of artificial intelligence. Wonderful, <laughs> a lot of fun making these these hippo based sport themed ones. And then my last one still. We're all doing all things hippo. We did hippos and transportation. And so um, you don't necessarily, if you're going to play the game multiple times, like are they going to remember where which, which they were and do I need to move them around? You don't need to because trust me, no one's going to remember when you play a game weeks later about how many, um, you know, where the the green hippo on a scooter was. Anyway, so uh, feel free if you want to change the points on the bottom if you would like to or not. But anyway, those are the mini games. A lot of fun to be able to play if you want to be able to incorporate into them. A last question is, um, how do you play? I mean, how long do you play for? Uh, this one is on you. You decide uh, ultimately how many you want to be able to do. Do you, uh, if you want to be able to do all nine, think about it. these are the number of questions that you're going to provide. So if I got five per round and I got nine, so right that gives me the total number of questions. So if I only want to be able to do thirty questions, let's see. Okay, if, uh, uh, I could only do six. So like I would literally either can get rid of uh, not go over those. But if I'm only going to do thirty, I can just go to my hippo board here, and I simply can just go in here and just delete those questions so the kids won't know that they're even existing. Okay, I want to do 35 questions, leave number seven up there, and I got 35. I want 40 questions, right? I want to be able to do less less of the matching. You can delete them. But basically, you put however many you want um, in there and let the kids know that's how long we're going to play. We're going to play for the certain number, however many questions that you have come up with. Um, and even if you felt like you wanted to do less, let's say if I only wanted to have three questions per board, you're more than welcome to do that too. This is all customizable if I wanted to, you know, only have one, I guess. But anyway, I like the idea of having multiples, but I would do three, four, five per slide kind of a thing. Um, if you wanted to, you could put different things on there. You can have images and pictures of people. So it's just one slide with whatever questions that you ultimately want them to be able to have on there. This is one of my newer games. So I would love some feedback on how to be able to edit and change. Let me do show you this over here. If you, if you were interested in doing some change, and this is a little bit more advanced level. So if you feel like I'm good, give me the game and, and I'm done. Go for it. You can go, you can, you can do that. Um, if I wanted to change some of these, let me show you about a little bit of what it looks like. I want to get into the um, selection pane. So in, in PowerPoint, if I'm my, the tabs across the top, I'm on home and under select over here on the right hand side, I want to see the selection pane. This is a good tool for those of you who are starting to really kind of get into more PowerPoint. The realization is that every object has it actually has a name. It has a thing. So like I this green, what, what is that? You know, um, the head, it actually has, a, the object has a name. And this selection pane, if I scroll here, has everything that is on this. And I have so many marbles and numbers on there. Uh, it's a bit complicated. But what I've done, though, is at the very top on the selection pane, I have these marbles. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong one. Let me bring up to the, that was the ELA one. Let me bring up this one here. I bring up my selection pane. There it is. So if I click on that middle marble, you can see I have labeled it as marble middle white. And kind of the neat thing is there's these little eyeballs. So if I hit the eyeball on that one, the eyeball on these, all the ones that I've labeled white, what I've basically done is I've just hidden them temporarily. They're there. I can't actually click on them because on the slide deck itself, because they have been hidden. So it's a great way if I ever need to be able to access things, where is something? You can find it over there. Most of the things are basically going to be numbered or named weird. Like what's picture 137? Like picture 137 is actually the orange hippo's head because that's when it was put into there. It didn't have a name for it. You could rename those. So I could simply right click the the picture, um, click it twice there and I can call it hippo orange. I only really identify the things that I need to know. So for me, if I'm going to go back and play with these, um, white ones in the future, I don't want kids to know. I want this one to be worth seven and maybe this one to be worth, uh, 10. Oh, it's a bit large. So I got to reduce the size on that one like that kind of a thing. If I want to be able to mix and match that up a little bit, so they're not necessarily, um, the same every time, or if you wanted to make them a whole lot more, that's how you'd be able to do it. And now I'm like, okay, well, I want to play the game again. I'll say, if, oh, how about this? Make them all 10. 
or at least those ones, and we'll do this one much larger. We'll make him worth 20 or something like that. All right, when you're ready to play then, all I go back over here to the right-hand side of the selection pane and hit the eyeball on them, and now they're all there, and it all plays like a normal game. There is the, the white marble in the middle. You click on that, and it's triggered to go away. The triggers are a fun part, uh, and I'm, these, I'm going to be doing some tutorials about how to be able to use triggers, but basically you click on something, you can decide one of a countless things to be able to happen. Things can appear or disappear. They can make sounds like the clicks there make sounds. The, the, uh, and that's all what these are uh, on each of the hippo bodies are just all the numbers zero through nine. And they have been um, uh, animated in order to show up and then not show up and to be able to add a sound to them. It's all built. To it's all built in. It's a lot of fun designing these things. Um, uh, but it's all been done for you. So all I'm looking for now is all I want you guys to be able to do is play some games. And as usual, love to be able to get feedback here either on the YouTube channel or on my Teachers Pay Teachers account, which you can find this game and so many of my other games. I have this up as a uh, standalone game, and I also got some pre-done bundles that if you want to be able to get, let's say, the Language Arts one or some other ones, you can be able to check those out. Have fun. Like I said, love to be able to some feedback. And as always, I am Ryan, the Game Show Guy.